What's up everybody, Paul Hickey here with NoOffSeason.com. I'm happy collecting and I hope you are too. Today's video is sponsored by Market Movers app by Sports Card Investor. It is the best place to track the value of your sports card collection as well as understand when the time is to buy and sell certain sports cards. You can track over 25,000 cards and if you wanna save 20% on Market Movers, go to marketmoversapp.com and use the promo code NOOFFSEASON or you can click the link below in the description. All right, so today's video is inspired by a comment on a Facebook post that I got on one of my posts and believe it or not, it was not about my book, What to Do After You Find Your Old Sports Card Collection, The Middle-Aged Dude's Guide to Selling Old Sports Cards. I released that book in April and I'm working on updating it because a lot has changed since April. It's still relevant and I could have replied to the Facebook post with buy my book, but instead I'm going to reply to the Facebook post with this video because essentially what it does is it answers the guy's question about what to do after he found a large baseball card collection from his childhood. So I made the Facebook post about something completely different. He replied to the post, hey, Paul, can you help me with this? And here's kind of the gist of it. He essentially has all of these different box sets of cards from 1979 tops through 1989 tops. Those are the most significant ones. And then he has some sets throughout the 80s of Fleer, some sets throughout the 80s of Donruss, one score, one OPG, one Leaf and some tops traded sets, et cetera, throughout the 80s. And then he's got some singles from 1951 through 1980, but did not give me any details on those. That's cool. I am going to run through the tops sets in the 80s, and the methodology that I'm going to show in this video is going to help him essentially answer all of his own questions. Because his questions, he's basically saying, he's listed all these prices for the factory sealed sets that he found on Amazon, and that these cards have been carefully stored in boxes in a dry location, away from extreme temperature swings and light of any kind. He says they're in good shape, but he has no idea how they might be graded. He thinks it's time to sell the cards to someone who would get more enjoyment out of them. He's tried to sell in his local region, but people either have no idea what they should be worth, or they do, and they're trying to rob him blind. So fair enough. This actually happens quite a bit. So I think if you're watching this, this will apply to you. So this is pretty basic. It just takes a little bit of work. And what I've done is I've essentially shortcutted to the most valuable cards in each of the sets. Because in order, to, the reality is the sets themselves are not going to sell for that much money because the work comes in actually breaking the set, understanding what are the most valuable cards within the set, and then deciding whether or not to get those cards graded. And so I've shortcutted to the 1979 top set. There's definitely some value. The Ozzie Smith rookie card, estimated value in PSA 10 of $30,000. Now the PSA 8 value, which is more likely, is $110. So it's not, I mean, it's a huge differential, but it is possible that you can make some money off of this. So even not getting the card graded, you can see here that the Ozzie Smith rookie, from a buy it now standpoint on eBay, people are asking uh, upwards of $200 um, for the Ozzie Smith rookie. Now, there's also a buy it now listing of $75. So there's, there's obviously a difference in condition there. One person thinks their card would grade closer to a 10 than the other. Um, now there's bids on this card, so you can try to bid on it and get it for less. Here is a PSA 8 that someone's wanting $450 for, an SGC 5 that someone's wanting $85 for. So it definitely does depend on the grade, but the process needs to be find the most valuable individual cards in the set. Do an eBay search for what the buy it now prices are for this particular top cards. And then filter by sold listings. So go down all the way down to sold items for the card. And you can see that this has sold for $12.99 recently. That one looks like it's in horrible condition though. Uh, here's a PSA 7 that sold for $250. So 
It's definitely more valuable than what this article says. This article is older, so this estimated PSA 8 value is definitely almost three times that right now. Um, the PSA 7 even is almost three times that right now. So if you add PSA 10 to the end of this search, you can see that has there even been a PSA 10 sold in a long time? Probably not. This is just a rare card. Here's a 6 that was sold for $100. So I think like a, a 6 is probably a pretty likely grade, if not better. So to get $100 out of that box just for that one card is what I would recommend. And then some other cards from that set. There's Nolan Ryan, a very valuable Nolan Ryan card. If that's anywhere close to a 10, it's going to bring in some money. There's a Pete Rose. If that's anywhere close to a 10, it's going to bring in some money. And when I say some money, we're talking over four or $5,000. Willie Stargell, same thing. So these aren't rookies. Ozzy Smith is the significant rookie. But Dave Winfield is another significant one. The answer is pull out these cards that I'm showing you right now. Paul Molitor, he was one of my favorites as a kid. George Brett, not a big fan of his, but his card's pretty valuable here. This 1979 top set has some valuable cards in it. Thurman Munson. And there's a market for all these cards. Robin Yount, Jim Palmer. So pull those out. Do the eBay searches in the way that I just told you. And you can see what these cards have been going for and what people are asking them for. I'm going to show you 1980 real quick because that's a significant set because it has the Ricky Henderson rookie in it. That's a huge card. So if you actually have this Ricky Henderson rookie, uh, this is PSACard.com in their sports market report price guide. But it essentially does the same thing. It pulls the data from eBay. So if we look at the Ricky Henderson Here's a PSA 9. Let's buy it now for $6,000. This is a very, very significant card here. Here's a buy it now PSA 9 for $3,500. Again, these are eBay listings. PSA 8.5 for $1,700. PSA 9 for $6,500. So definitely worth breaking the sets and going in and getting a few of them graded. Um, SGC is a great option right now since PSA is closed. They do a great job on vintage cards and have a significant reputation, almost as strong as PSA as it relates to these vintage cards. Let's just quickly go through the 80s, the most significant cards. So we've got um, 1980 was the Ricky Henderson rookie. 1981 did not have very many significant rookies at all, but some of the same players have some very valuable cards. So you've got the Pete Rose, you've got the Nolan Ryan, you've got the Johnny Bench, you've got Harold Baines rookie card. So Harold Baines was a rookie from that year that's a significant player. You've got uh, Kurt Gibson rookie card. That's significant. Gibby has a huge fan base in Detroit, L.A., Ricky Henderson's second year card is a big one. Reggie Jackson has a great card that year, the all-star card. Dale Murphy has a fan base. His card's worth some money from that year. Fernando Valenzuela has a huge international fan base uh, in North America. Tim Raines, Hector Cruz, George Brett. So a lot of familiar names here. Montreal Expos future stars with Tim Raines on there. So... Um, We'll just quickly go through the years. 1982, Lee Smith, rookie card. Carl Yastrzemski has a card from that year, I believe, as a manager. 1983 has uh, Tony Gwynn and Wade Boggs, rookie year. So 1983 is a huge one. Definitely take care of that set. Get those cards graded. Ryan Sandberg, those three cards are worth getting graded. I actually don't even care what condition they're in. I would get them graded. Don Mattingly, 1984 rookie for sure, as well as some other cards in that set. 1986 didn't really have many rookies, but Eric Davis, Ryan Sandberg had some notable cards. 1987, Barry Bonds rookie card is the most valuable. This, these are the years where they start to get less, less and less valuable, but Barry Bonds, Greg Maddox rookie, those are significant cards right now. Bo Jackson rookie is a significant card. I would get those graded. Mark McGuire as another considered rookie card that year, even though there was a card of his the year before. This is his rookie card in a pro uniform. Barry Larkin, rookie card, 1987. So 87's a big year. 1988, tops. 
not as big of a year, but still a few valuable cards. I actually love the design of that year. Tom Glavin, rookie, that's a cool card. I would get that one graded. All right, now, Ken Griffey Jr. and Randy Johnson are the most significant rookies in 1989. So again, the methodology is find these cards. Do the eBay searches. I would get them graded with SGC right now since PSA is closed. And then I would sell them individually either on eBay. Uh, an easy way to do that is through PWCC. So if you go to PWCC Marketplace. Dot com. You don't even have to have an eBay account. What you can do is you can send in your graded cards, your SGC graded cards or your PSA graded cards. Sign up for a vault at PWCC. It's free. Then once you have a vault, you can submit your cards to the vault service. Once they're in the vault, you can immediately have PWCC auction off your cards uh, through their eBay account, and this should boost the eyeballs on the listings and should get you the biggest bang for your buck. And uh, if you're looking to just basically immediately maximize the profit from a collection like this, that's definitely the way that I would go about it. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. Again, this has been brought to you by Market Movers. Go to marketmoversapp.com. Sign up using the promo code no off season, save 20% and help me earn a little bit of income for the business. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'm Paul Hickey with nooffseason.com. I'm happy collecting and I want you to be too. Thanks and have a great day.